So in today's notes, if you take a look at the top of the page, there's that graphic organizer or thinking map there to the right. So we're going to build on the set of imaginaries, which we talked about the very first day, and I think we had a diagram similar to this in our notes. We're going to put the real and imaginary together to form the set of complex. So you can draw, let's draw a box here. Here's our complex numbers, which are made up of the real and the imaginary. There are no other branches that go down or branch off from the set of imaginary. The set stands alone. Okay? So a complex number has both a real part and an imaginary part. If it didn't, it'd be just imaginary or just real. Okay? So you have to have some number, whether it be a radical, a whole number, a decimal, a or a fraction, and an I term. So we say that a complex number can be written in the form a plus bi, okay? Where a and b are real numbers, and i is the square root of negative 1. Conjugate. We talked about conju uh, conjugates with irrational numbers and the irrational's unit. The conjugate, just to go back, of 1 plus radical 2 was... 1 minus radical 2, so the conjugate of A plus BI would be A minus BI. Okay? And each branch here is a subset of that above it. So the integers are a subset of the rational, the rational is a subset of the real. So the real numbers is a subset of the complex. Okay? Real numbers, they are complex numbers when your B equals 0. So, for example, if you had 7 plus 0i, we don't write 0i. 0 times anything is 0. We just write 7 plus 0, which is 7. When the b is a 0, your imaginary unit is gone. And the same goes for the imaginary units, um, where a is 0 and b is not 0. So 0 plus 3i would just be 3i. If you read the second table, which goes along with examples one and two, okay, two complex numbers are equal when their real parts are equal and the imaginary parts are equal. So what it's saying is, is if A plus BI is equal to C plus DI, the real part is equal, so A is equal to C, and the imaginary part is the same, so B must be equal to D. So I'm going to give you just a real simple example. If, I'm going to try squeezing it over here, if I have 3 plus 2i, what's the complex number that's equal to 3 plus 2i? It has to be ex the exact same thing, which would be 3 plus 2i. Um, another one I'll squeeze because I have more room. 7 minus 2i is equal to 7 minus 2i. They have to be exactly the same to match. So if you have a highlighter, you can use a highlighter, but I have colored pens up here. The real part has to match, so I tend to circle the real part. And then if you don't have a highlighter or a colored pen or pencil, you can use boxes. And then the imaginary part has to match. Does that make sense? So down below, okay, um, you can make note that these two problems go with that box above. If it's stating solve for x and these real no, or complex numbers are equal, so what it's saying is that this expression is equal to that expression, you, we can do the same thing we did previously in the years. You can kind of erase or cross out exactly what's the same. So it's 3 plus, 3 plus. So that 7i on the left has to match x minus 2i on the left side. So I want this number, x minus 2, to be a 7. So it would be 9. Yep, you can set this equal to, you can look at the i's, you can cancel those out as they're on the same side if you actually want to solve the equation. And x minus 2 is equal to 7. Add the 2, 
and x is equal to 9. So that's just with the imaginary piece missing. They gave you the real part of it, which was the 3's. Okay, the 3's were the same, and you were just looking at x, which is a part of the imaginary part. On the right side, in number 2, we're solving for both x and y. So we're solving for the real number and the imaginary part of it. So let's use, again, circles. I need that front part to match that front part. So if I want this 3x to be a 6, what does x have to be equal to? A 2. And then I want this imaginary part to match that imaginary part. So I want the negative 5i to be equal to negative 10yi. It's tricky because you're going from a larger number, 10, to a 5. Well, what you could do is you could cancel out the i's, right, since they're on both sides, and you have negative 5 equal to 10y. To solve for y, you would divide by 10. I think you're on the right track, Matt. And y is equal to a negative, not 2, one but 1 half, because you're going from a larger number, 10, to a smaller number. Thank you, Mackenzie. I'll give you credit. <laughs> um, I forgot to bring down the negative here. So a negative divided by a negative would give us a positive. See if that works. All right, the next section we have to write. So complex number form, a complex number is written in A plus BI. That's standard form. Okay, just like your standard form for a line is y equals mx plus b. There's certain ways that we write certain types of numbers. So when it asks you to write a number in complex number form, this is the standard form. So all we're doing is doing what we did yesterday for question number, or two days ago for number four. Break down, so this is really 7 minus i radical 24, or you can, when you factor it, put the negative with the radical. Largest perfect square factor of 24 is not 8, but... Four. We're looking for a perfect square. So 24 is 4 times 6. So this is really 7 minus the i times the square root of 4, 2, 2i two radical 6. And that's in complex number form because the i term is written second. The next one. And you can combine these two right now. What's 3 plus a negative 5? Negative 2. Plus 2 times the square root of negative 4 is 2i. So this is really negative 2 plus 4i. And the last one, what's the equivalency for i squared? i squared is equal to negative 1. Good. So this is really 4i plus 6 times a negative 1. If you type this in the calculator, It'll take you right to 4i plus negative 6 is the answer. And writing it in complex number form is negative 6 plus 4i. All right, on the back side, at the top, we're going to be adding and subtracting um, real numbers in the form a plus bi. So you can do this, I think. We can verify my um, thinking because you used to be able to do this on the graphing calculators. So check that today. If it doesn't work, that's because of the software upgrade. But you used to be able to type in the whole expression. So when you're adding, just like you added polynomials, you add the real term. So what's 2 plus a negative 5? Negative 3. And then add the i terms. Negative or positive 4i minus 6i is negative 2i. No, it doesn't do it? Oh, it does do it. So you can do these um, on the calculator, and it'll tell you the answer if you want to double check. Now with the next one, so with addition, you can combine straight through parentheses. When it's subtraction, just like with polynomials at the beginning of the year, you have to distribute the negative. So this is really negative 3 minus 8i, negative times negative, plus 2 minus 4i. So combining the two real numbers, Negative 1, negative 8, negative 4 is negative 12i. Questions? 
adding a coefficient in number 8 of 5 in front. So this is really 8 minus 4i minus 20 plus 5i. Combining the real parts, what do you get? 8 minus 20? Negative 12, and then negative 4i plus 5i is a positive 1i. Next one is not in terms of i at the moment, but you should recognize any negative radicand is an i term. So this is really 4 plus square root of negative 9? 3i minus 12i. Combine the two i terms and it's 4 minus 9i. So why don't you take a moment and just pull out the i's in 10 and 11, and then we'll finish with the operation. Oh, no, we have 12. So take a moment, rewrite these. So right now, you could essentially combine your two real terms. 5 plus 4 is what? 9. So my answer is going to be 9. Now I just have to combine the two radicals, if possible. They have to be like. So 12 is? So negative 2 radical 2i radical 4 radical 3. Square root of 4 is 2. Times the 2i out front is negative 4i radical 3. And then what's the largest perfect square factor of 27? 9. So we have 9 times 3, so I'm going to add to that 3i radical 3. They're both in terms of a radical 3, so you can combine them. What's the final answer? Good, negative i radical 3. Simplifying 8, well, let's actually distribute the negative through. So this is 2 minus, and since I have to rewrite this line, I'm going to break down the 8, which is 4 times 2. So this is really 2 minus 2i two radical 2 plus the 6 minus 3i times, largest perfect square factor of, actually that minus is also going to change to negative times negative positive. What's the largest perfect square factor of 32? 16 is right. 16 times 2, so 4 times 3i would be 12i radical 2. Combine the two real terms. 2 plus 6 is 8. The two i terms, we've got a positive 12i and a negative 2i to give me a positive 10i radical Last one. Express the sum. Sum means to add. So I'm going to add 7 minus i to its conjugate. What's the conjugate of 7 minus i? 7 plus i. When I add, 7 plus 7 is 14, but what is a negative i plus a positive i? Zero. That's the additive inverse. You're adding the opposite, so the answer is just 14. You can check to make sure the calculator should do this one as well to verify your thinking. But 